Right. I've been going through a bit of a tough time recently and I, I just wanted to open up a little bit and kind of share how I'm feeling. So if you just allow me to be vulnerable for a minute, then that'd be, I'd, I'd appreciate your support anyway. So uh, I, I really, I wasn't feeling like myself uh, of late. I felt like I was looking in the mirror and not really recognizing uh, the person staring back at me. And it was quite a weird feeling to be an alien in your own body. And I spent a lot of time kind of, just took a step back, slowed shit down, spent a lot of time on some introspection, some reflection, and um, I'm not rapping, that wasn't supposed to rhyme. Um, and after a while, I came to the conclusion that the reason why I don't feel like myself is because I'm not shredded enough. And so, I'm gonna do a mini cut and it starts today. And I'm gonna fucking smash his dick off, mate. <laughs> yeah. But what is a mini cut or mini diet as you could call it? To help explain it, let me illustrate a typical dieting phase with the use of a proper shit graph. If we plot fat loss on the y axis and time on the x axis, it might look something like this. Actually, no, that is a bit too extreme. Maybe something like this. Let's call it a 16 week cut because that's pretty ordinary for a complete dieting phase. And we'll section it off into blocks. So we have the first four weeks, then the middle eight weeks, and then the final four weeks. We'll call it early stages, main bulk of the cut. Hope that's not too confusing. Probably shouldn't have used the word bulk there. And the final stages, if you look at the left hand side, you'll see that fat loss in the first few weeks is far greater than it is later on. Or another way of saying this would be the rate of fat loss generally starts high and decreases as you get further into a dieting phase, i.e. losing fat gets harder the more you lose. And that's where the phrase, that last stubborn bit of fat comes from. There are a few reasons as to why this happens, but I'll save that for another video. The point is, a mini cut is an attempt to utilize this fact to our advantage by skimming off the early stages and therefore the most productive stages of a dieting phase. And since I'm not wanting to do an entire dieting phase, this is what I'm doing. There's a bit more to it, but I'll fill in the blanks as we go through the video. And the final thing to mention is that weight loss and fat loss definitely aren't the same thing. And if we plotted weight loss against time, it actually would look similar, but just be a much more extreme version of this. But why even do a mini cut? Like, what is the purpose? Well, for me, simply it's just to lose some fat quickly. I've used them in the past or recommended them to clients when they've been kind of part way through a bulk and just get into some undesirable body fat levels. So you still wanna continue bulking, but you're thinking, maybe I'm too fat to continue bulking. So I envisage it a bit like resetting a typewriter. Not that I've ever touched the typewriter because I'm not a hundred, but you get the idea. You do a short, sharp fat loss phase and then get back on that lean bulk time. Now, that's not exactly my situation. I just happen to go to Paris and get fat. That's why I'm doing it anyway. set my calories to 2,400 and this is lower than I would usually diet on, typically around 2,700, but since I'm only cutting for a short period of time, I can get away with going a bit lower than usual without feeling the typical negative effect of a calorie deficit. If you're dieting for a longer period, you need to pace yourself a bit more and try to delay the onset of tiredness, fatigue and strength loss that can often occur when a deficit is maintained for weeks or months on end. I split my calories down into 180 grams of protein, 270 grams of carbs and 66 grams of fat.
My lifting was pretty typical, I stuck to my full body training split that I outlined a few videos back and I'll link that video below if you want to go watch it now. It's pretty high volume and compound heavy, so as resistance training goes, I'd say it's fairly demanding from a calorie perspective. My workouts felt fine and I still managed to make some progress on my lifts, but that's kind of the point of a mini cut. You're in a deficit for such a short time frame that it really shouldn't affect your performance. I'll touch on cardio later. I fucked up. I'm gonna hang my head in shame. Look at the shame on this. There's so much shame going on right now. So, my parents came up yesterday to visit. We went for lunch. I had saved some calories, specifically so that I could go in on some pasta. Turns out I went in a lot harder. My girlfriend didn't finish hers, so I finished hers. There was bread. There was a lot of, you know. So, what I'm going to do is ignore it, not weigh myself today because I just don't want to look at it, go hard today and then just carry on as normal. So this is going to be a two week mini court, even with one fuck up. So let's crack on anyway. I don't typically follow a set meal plan, I just prefer to track my intake as I go through the day. However, I did find myself basically sticking to the same first and last meal slash snack each day for this two weeks. I think this can be a really good halfway point between tracking as you go and following a full meal plan because it gives you some kind of predictability with your calories and macros while still allowing you some freedom in between. Aside from that, it's also pretty convenient. I would just have eggs and egg whites for breakfast and then I would finish my day with a bowl of oats as the final meal slash snack. And then I'd hit the remaining macros in between that time however I wanted. Even just finishing each day with the same kind of food creates this habit where you associate it with just drawing a line under your eating for the day. And I think that can help stop you going over calories. Yes, the people, it is about 20 past nine on Thursday morning, a few days out from the end of this mini cut on the way to the gym because I've been training twice a day, some days doing my lifting session in the morning. So then I can go back, do some cardio in the evening. Not something I would typically do, but needs must. So, doing it. I didn't do extensive cardio during this two week period, I think six sessions in total, but when I did it just consisted of a steady pace uphill walk and a treadmill. I wanted to keep the intensity fairly low because I was double training as I explained previously and I thought a lifting session plus something intense like HIT might just be a lot to recover from when I was on low-ish calories.
Yes, the people, so the results are in. Tell me what you think about my progress. Tell me if you think it's good. Tell me if you think it's shit. That's fine as well. I think it's decent. I definitely feel a lot more shredded than at the start of this two weeks, or I don't even feel like I was shredded at the start of it. I was just like lean-ish. Um, but now I do feel actually quite, you know, considerably peeled. Right? I think you can tell a bit of difference in the photos and videos. I think specifically the back shot, you can see quite a difference because I do tend to store quite a lot of fat or quite a lot of my body fat as a proportion on my back, which is um, just genetic fat distribution. And I suppose I'm kind of lucky in that sense because people don't really look at your back because your abs aren't there. So that's good. Uh, seven pounds down total, just over seven pounds in the two weeks. And like I said earlier, weight loss isn't necessarily always 100% fat loss. Definitely not actually. So I reckon out of that seven pounds, probably three or four pounds of it, maybe might have been body fat. Um, but that's just a wild guess. You can't really put specific exact numbers on that because the scales that I used, I don't think those body fat percentages will be particularly accurate. Now, the whole point of me doing this really was just to try and illustrate, or at least the whole point of me doing it was to lose some body fat. But the whole point of me making a video about it was to try and illustrate how easy fat loss can be and I'm saying can be purposely rather than just saying how easy it is because that is, you know, down to subjective experience. Fat loss might be particularly difficult for one person and very easy for another person. But the whole point is it can be, can be, it can be easy for everyone. Once you've gone through the hard process of instilling the basic fundamental principles, the basic habits that bring fat loss about such as maintaining a calorie deficit consistently increasing your activity making you training up from a combination of resistance training and then potentially some cardio if you need to facilitate a deficit all these things and once you have done it once you'll find it a lot easier to do it again and now for me it's just like do i want to just lose a bit of fat do i want to spend two weeks and you know shed a few pounds okay I'll do it and it's just as easy as a decision and uh, so the first time is always the hardest and if you are yet to do a full good proper shred then uh, I encourage you when the time is right I think that's it obviously like the fuck out of my video please because I think it was sick wasn't it thanks you can also comment on it saying it was sick you can also subscribe to my shit saying Joe you're sick I've just subscribed wowzer what a dude. I'd love to be your friend. All right, I'm rambling. See you later. We out. Back soon with pancake videos. Jordy Lenny is my hero.